going to show you how I make skidboards. You've probably seen some of my old videos. I've made um, a couple of long boards now and they come out quite good. I'm going to try and make a skidboard today. I've got a piece of marine plywood, which is about 125 centimetres by 60 centimetres. And I'm going to be cutting out a skimboard which will have a finished length of 120 centimetres by 49 centimetres with a, with a, with a fish tail. Okay, as you can see I've already got my design on the, on the piece of marine plywood. I'm going to be cutting it out now. Okay, to cut out my um, skin board I'm going to be using a, a jigsaw. Now I'll put the skin board on my wood bench and start cutting it out roughly for now then I'll finish it off later on. side. I'm leaving it a little bit bigger than my actual shape so I'll have a lot of room to sand it to the shape that I like. Just roughing her out now. And to do the same thing on the other side.
right now. Now I have to get up my sandpaper wheel and sand it down to a finished size. The next step I'm going to be using a sandpaper wheel. As you can see, it's attached to a normal household drill. So we can get our skid board down to its finished size. It's going to take a while now, but panel panel will be getting it down to a finished size. I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Okay, now to finish off the fishtail and round off the edges. As you can see, I've got my more or less my finished shape. I'm going to be using air powered it's a air powered sandpaper belt you 
you can also do it by hand. Depends what you've got at home, I suppose. I've been lucky to have one of these because I took it home from work. I borrowed it for the week. Okay, I'll show you how it was. Don't worry about the noise, that's the compressor. Nice. 
this. Now, to finish the top and bottom, the easiest way to do that is to use a, a hand sander. I'm going to be using a, quite a fine grain sandpaper, grain sandpaper, about 250. I've already finished off the one of the sides. I'm using um, some soft rags underneath to not damage the underside while I'm sanding down the top side. Now that I've finished one side, I'm going to flip it over. sander and start Now you keep going ahead um, the way I'm doing it at the moment until you finish the whole board. It's going to take a while you have to try and follow the grain while you're doing it. And when you're finished, um, we'll do the finishing touches with some sandpaper by hand. And she's, she'll be ready to do the next stage. stage is all about giving our skin board a, a nice rock from one end to the other. And the only way to do it, I'm doing it the way I found to do it, and a lot of other people do it the same way, is they put the skin board in a bath. Now I've got the skin board in the bath, it's going to have to stay in there for about two or three hours. And it's basically all soaked through. down to the garage and I'll show you the mould I've made so we're going to get a nice rocker on our skin board. As you can see I've got weights, weights on top of the skin board to keep it down. It's made of wood foot. Like I said, it should take about two or three hours to soak all the way through. Now you can see we're back down in the garage. Um, as you can see, the skin board has changed colour. You can also tell by its weight, weighs about double now. And these are all the parts I need for my mould to give us a nice rocker from one end to the other. And I'll show you how I've also tried to. Um, minimize the space it takes up because as you can see I'm working in the garage and also have to put the car in it so we haven't got a lot of space and I can't leave this table down so as you, as you see it now it'll actually be hanging off the wall when it's finished so let me put it all together and I'll show you what it's like when it's finished the mold is ready after wetting down our skim board for three hours I put it inside the mold which is actually hanging off the wall. It's actually on the underside of my workbench that you saw earlier in the, uh, the video. I used four pieces of wood. No, sorry, five pieces of um, wood to bolt it down to the underside of the table.
spacer at the far end, at the front. We're going to get some rocker at the front. space at the back where the last piece of wood is. Got some rock at the back as well. It's gonna have about a five millimeter rock at each end. Which is not a lot, but it should do. We'll see how we go. If I need more the next on the next skimble and I'll uh, put more in there. And there she is. Now we're going to let it dry for about two days. So it's completely dry. Let's see what the results might be. See you in a few days. Okay, so almost three days have gone by now, which is more than enough to let us come forward right out. As you can see, it's still in the mold. As you can see, I've got the skin wood out of the mold now. It's back on the workbench. I'll show you how much rocker we've been able to get out of it. Not a lot no. for uh, the first game boy no. It's not that bad. Now that's what's left to do is to give it a good sand down again with some light sandpaper and fill in any any holes that there might be. Stop painting. Now we're ready to put our design on the top of our skin board. As you can see, I've already penciled out my design on the top of my skin board. I'm going to be using a technique called pyrography, which means you burn the design. soldering iron to build my design into the top of the skin board. If you've seen some of my other videos on making long boards, it's the same technique. So basically you pencil out your design onto the top of the piece of wood. You burn it into the wood using the soldering iron. It takes a while to get the hang of it. Okay, now I'm burning the design into the wood. As you can see. Need a steady hand. 
which I haven't got, but... As you can see, the design on the top of our scrum board is finished. Came out quite good. Now, as you can see, I've taped around the outside of the rails of our scrum board. I'm getting it ready to paint the bottom. I'm going to be using two undercoats using a uh, wood undercoat paint. And then I'll be using a, a lime green top coat. I'll be giving that two coats. show you what it looks like when the first base coat is finished. Okay, um, there's been a bit of a change of plans. I was, I did say I was going to have a coloured uh, bottom on my skin board. And in the end, the type of resin that I bought can't be used over um, varnishes or paint. It has to be used on a bare wood surface. So I had to re sanding down the underside of the skin board. And put the resin on a bare wood finish. There's a few air bubbles, but it should be fine. I've now got this um, gas burner here that you can use to eliminate the air bubbles when the resin is still wet. I'm going to try and use that on the top side. And then we'll see how we go. Anyway, this is the bottom side. Now I'll get it ready for the top side. Okay, we're almost ready. This is the top side already. As you can see, I've scotched all the way around the rail to stop the resin now. Going on to the underside, I'll be taking it off when uh, resin starts to set so I can run uh, the resin around the rail. Okay, I'll be mixing up about 200 mils of uh, resin and about 60 mils of um, hardener. This is the resin. As I say, it's only an Italian, um, but it's uh, an epoxy resin. And it's the hardener. Okay, let's start mixing.
Now I've been mixing my resin for about two minutes now. I've been probably been mixing for about another couple of minutes because this is a long drying resin. It takes about four hours to go hard. As you can see. It's a little bit more than 260 milliliters. It's better have a lot more than you need because if you've already started and you have to mix up other resin, it usually makes a mess. Okay, the resin's ready. Just have to pour it on the top of the skim board and I'll be spreading it out. This. Okay. Just start in the middle. Put some on. And start spreading her out. Don't be stingy. You're gonna need a lot of resin. It's better to have more, too much than not enough. Okay. Then at the fin at the end, I'll be using the gas torch as I said before to pop the air bubbles, which I didn't use on the underside. Let's see if we can do a better job on the upside. Okay, I'll show you what it's like when I'm closer to the finish. Okay, this is the end result. Should be good enough. It's not perfect. But for what I need, it should be okay. As you can see, there's the... I'm doing in the garage, so a little bit of dust and bugs and whatnot have been settled on it. But it should be fine when it's dry. I didn't end up using the gas burner because I didn't, didn't seem to pop the bubbles that are in the resin. I tried, as anybody knows why. Maybe it's the type of resin I'm using. It didn't really seem to do anything. I've seen in other videos that people are using it, but maybe it's the resin I'm using is not the right type. Okay. Now we just have to spit, wait for a couple of days and it'll uh, go all hard. It's almost ready to use. See you in a couple of days. Okay, we've arrived at the finished product. I'm now in Sardinia. This is our skimboard finished product. So as you can see, I put a green brick pad on the back. If anybody's got any suggestions on how I can get a better result, let me know. Comments in the video. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Have a good summer. See you next time on the next project. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.